Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math video for you guys. Today we are looking at lesson 1.4 and in lesson 1.4 we are going to be looking at some mental math strategies to help us add more efficiently. We always want to work on not only being right in our answers when we're working in our math problems but being as efficient as possible. So looking at different strategies to make the numbers a little bit more easier to manipulate and manage. So we're going to look at three strategies. One strategy is going to involve a number line. Another strategy is going to involve using those compatible numbers. And then another strategy is going to involve creating friendly numbers that are easier for us to work with. So I will be sure to give you an example of each of those strategies. And, that, and then, of course, at the very end, I will come back with some closing thoughts for you guys and we'll wrap things up. So I will see you guys in just a second. All right, so here we have our first example. And in this example, we are going to be adding... 57 plus 15 and we are going to use a number line to do that. So I've already created the number line that we're going to use for this particular problem and then we're going to walk through what exactly or how exactly does this number line help us out. So the number line starts at 57 because that is your first add-in and I'm going to be adding 15 to that. So the very first thing that I want to do on this number line, or the way that I want to use this number line, I should say, is I want to use it and count to my first 10. So for me to get from 57 to the next 10, how many spots do I need to jump to do that? So I should recognize that the next 10 after 57 would be 60. So I'm going to jump from 57 all the way here to 60. And let me make this line a little bit thicker. And once I make that jump and I land on my 60, I want to ask myself, okay, well, how many spots was that for me to get from 57 to 60? There was 58, 59, 60. So that was three spots or three jumps that I had to take to get from 57 to 60. I'm not done yet, though, because I have to add a total of 15, and that only represented me adding three to 57. Now I'm going to get to my next set of 10 from 60. So I have to ask myself, what is the next 10 or the next number that is based on 10 after 60? I should know that that is going to be 70. So I'm going to jump all the way to 70 right there. And I'm going to ask myself the same question. How many jumps did it take for me to get from 60 to 70? Well, here's 61. 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, and 70. So that was a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 jumps. So I'm going to add 10 there. Now I'm still not done because that only represents me adding 3 and 10 or 13 to the number 57. But I need to add 15. So now I should recognize, okay, I have 10 jumps plus another three jumps. That's 13. Now all I need to do is make two more jumps to get to that magic number of 15 total jumps. So I'm going to do, this is 13 jumps, 14, 15 ends up being right here. This was 13, 14, 15. And that was a total of one, two, two more spots. Okay. So this is just up here to show that I did 10, or I'm sorry, three jumps plus 10 jumps, that was 13. 13 plus another two jumps is 15. So I've met the requirement of jumping 15 times on this number line. Now, as far as how do I interpret what my answer is from this number line? Well, I just look and see, well, where did you land? Where was your final landing spot or your final destination on this number line once you made a total of 15 jumps? And my final landing spot was the number 72. So that tells me using a number line that 57 plus 15 is going to give me a sum of 72. So with this number line strategy, the biggest thing you want to remember is you want to go by as go by tens as much as possible. So we started at 57. I wanted to jump to my first 10 because tens are nice and easy for my mind to work with. And every time I jump, I need to record how many jumps did I take or how many steps I, did I take in that giant jump. So here I took three steps in that giant jump. Then I wanted to get to my next 10, which was 70. I took 10 steps and that giant jump to get to 70. And then I had two more jumps to go because I had to do it 
do 15 jumps total or 15 steps total depending on how you want to look at it and that brought me to 72. So that is our first strategy where you use a number line to add two numbers together. Okay, in this example, we are going to be adding 178 plus 227. And in this example, I want to use compatible numbers. I want to look for those numbers that are nice and friendly with each other, work well together. So I'm going to look at 178 first, and I'm going to ask myself, what's a nice clean number that I can change that to so that it's easily added with another number mentally? So I'm going to take 178, and I know that 178 is very close to 175, so I'm going to pull 175 out of 178, recognizing that when I take 175 out of that 178, I still have another 3, because 175 plus another 3 will give me 178. The reason why I'm doing that though is because this number is going to be very easy for me to work with in just a second, and this number is now easier for me to work with because it's a very small number. So now I need to look at 227 and I need to think about the same thing. Okay, what can I change 227 with, two, sorry, so that it's compatible with 175 and then whatever's left over, I'll add that over here. That should be pretty easy. You should immediately see, well, you can change 227 to 225 because I love adding numbers that are based on 25s and I should recognize that if I took 225 out of 227, I still have two left over and those have to be accounted for off to the side. So now I've kind of broken these two numbers apart so that I can have these compatible numbers. And what's nice is it also left me with two really small numbers that are very easy for me to add together. So let me move my board or zoom my camera out so you can see a little bit more, not in, but out. There we go. And now let me add these together. So let me start with 175 plus 225. 5 plus 5 is 0. I'm going to regroup that 1. 7 plus 2 is 9. Plus 1 more is 10. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. Plus another one is 4. So right now I have a partial sum. This is telling me that 175 plus 225 is 400. Now, if you're really advanced in math or your mind is really on fire today, you could have added that mentally together because you were using numbers that were based on 25. But if you did it this way, that's fine too. Now I'm over here and this should feel very easy. Three plus two, well that's easy, that's five. And I need to remind myself that I need to add those two partial sums together. This is a part of my sum, 400, and that's the other part of my sum, the number five. So I wanna add those together. So 400 plus five is gonna give me 405. That tells me that the sum of 178 plus 227 is going to be 405. So that is the second example where we pulled these numbers apart to create these compatible numbers, added the leftovers together, and came up with our final sum of 405. In the very last example, we're gonna be adding two numbers together, and we're gonna kind of break them apart or manipulate them a little bit so that we can create some friendly numbers and then use those friendly numbers to add. Okay, here's our third and final example. We are adding the numbers 38 plus 56. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna create some more friendly numbers, some mentally friendly numbers that are nice and easy for me to work with. So I'm gonna look at 38 first. And mental, mentally friendly numbers are usually numbers that are based on tens. So I wanna ask myself, what can I do to get 38 to be a number that is based off of 10? Well, I can add two to it, and instead of it being 38, it would become 40. So I'm gonna write 38 as 38 plus two, so that becomes 40. Now when I add this two, I have to recognize that now, instead of, when I continue this problem, now instead of adding 56, I need to know that now I'm really gonna have to add 54 because I've already added two of the 56 there. So. Now I have 40, and now I need to take the 56 
and subtract the two that I kind of just stole from it to get 40, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna take 56 minus two, that's going to give me 54. So now, instead of adding 38 plus 46, I am now adding 40, which is a nice even number, plus 54. It's 54 because I took or stole, I snuck out two from that 56 when I wanted to change my 38 to a 40. That's nice and easy for me to add because I know mentally that 40 plus 54 is going to give me an answer of 94. So with this strategy of using friendly numbers, I know that 38 plus 56 is going to equal 94. So those are your three examples. The first example, we used a number line so that we can visually see what we're doing when we're adding on a number line. The second strategy involved us looking for those compatible numbers, numbers that are very friendly with each other, easy to work with together, and easy for our minds to add together, and then adding those little bits that were left over after we work with those compatible numbers. The third strategy involved us kind of breaking apart numbers and using actually a little bit of subtraction to help us add. So those are the three strategies that we have. Ultimately, you guys will get to a point where you can kind of decide which of those strategies you want to use when you're faced with adding some numbers together. So as far as this lesson, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I will be sure to see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye everybody.